Hi folks, it's uh, Bruce again from my Baptronics Mountain Labs here in Colorado. And uh, today I'm taking a look at uh, one of my favorite uh, frequency sources on my bench. Something I, I use all of the time uh, as my, my standard because it's very quick to dial in. But this is, this is a PTS, it's uh, Programmable Test Sources, 250. It's a 1 megahertz to 250 megahertz synthesizer. It's a PTS. They, uh, they make some serious direct digital synthesizers. Uh, and they use an approach where they have a combination of analog and digital synthesis in order to generate uh, very clean output very quickly. This 250 has nine, uh, nine knobs on the front that are working and one... Uh, one blank knob on the extreme right which uh, uh, is an option which is not included but these three banks of three knobs each they represent the different decades uh, starting with Hertz going to kilohertz in the middle and then megahertz at the end you can dial in any frequency you want from 1 megahertz to 250 megahertz uh, according to the spec in 1 Hertz steps um, that has a, an adjustable um, level control and a, a DB meter and that um, that adjustable control allows you to uh, adjust the output from plus 3 to plus 13 dBm uh, to 1 volt RMS max uh, into 50 ohms it has a flatness of plus and minus a half a dB um, what makes this a, uh, uh, additionally a very serious uh, piece of equipment for a bench is that the main oscillator from which this uh, unit derives all of the frequencies <clears throat> that it's able to provide uh, comes from a uh, PTS oven controlled crystal oscillator uh, which has some very nice uh, specs on stability and base frequency. Uh, it's rated at 3 times 10 to the minus 9th per day plus or minus 1 times 10 to the minus 8th uh, 0 to 50 degrees centigrade and uh, basically 1 hertz a year out of 10 million. Uh, the oscillator in this particular unit has been calibrated using a um, rubidium standard this is my rubidium standard here right now. The fact that my light is green and not red tells me that I'm in lock. And uh, I provide that rubidium signal to the equipment on my bench for this calibration. So I'm running the external oscillator for this PTS 500 is that rubidium standard. My uh, uh, Philips um, frequency counters are using that external standard as well so when I go to use those to measure something um, they'll give me something right down to the accuracy of the rubidium and uh, I use that uh, in a technique called um, Lissajou patterns where I bounce the uh, the frequency 10 megahertz frequency from this unit against the 10 megahertz frequency of my uh, my rubidium and uh, was able to lock the Lissajou pattern and uh, I show you that on my video here in a couple of minutes so there is an input on the back we'll take a look at that here we have an uh, um, input on the back for an external standard and a switch that allows me to go from internal to external so if I want to put an external in here like I did on my bench with the rubidium, uh, you can. Or if you choose to do so, you can take uh, uh, the 10 megahertz from the crystal oscillator internally here, and as long as you uh, buffer it properly through a distribution amp, you can use this particular oscillator to become your bench standard, and you can run all your equipment like I am. So, all of the equipment that runs off of 10 megahertz anyway. Um, this unit has uh, an output. The main output is on the back. There is an output on the front, but it's not connected. 
If you choose to connect it to the front, you can disconnect the rear output and move it uh, to the front connector and, uh, and do that. Uh, and as you can see here, there is a local remote switch. <coughs> right now, uh, I've got it, I'm using it in local. The switch is, I think, flipped upside down because it, uh, it goes to local when I, when I pop the switch upwards. And it goes to remote when I go down. There is an interface uh, card here with um, a connector on the bottom, and out of that it goes into the uh, to the standard BCD, uh, I believe, control board inside this unit for remote control. I don't know anything about the remote control uh, system uh, other than the card is in there and we are wired for it. I am able to switch from local to remote. I do believe it's probably working. Everything else is working great on this unit. Um, but should uh, somebody choose to try and hook it up rem for remote control, um, they're they're kind of on their own. I can't help. I can't test it. Uh, but I do believe it is functional. It's not prohibiting anything anyway. Also, something called a picket fence output here. Uh, also uh, known as a uh, comb output. And essentially what that is, is a, uh, an output that displays, allows you to display all of the uh, harmonic frequencies derived from the 10 megahertz oscillator that are used uh, internally within this system to provide all of the frequencies uh, through, an, uh, through a mass of mixing and filtering and so on. Okay, so I've, uh, I've hooked the PTS-250 up. Uh, so that the output of the 250 is going to the Y input of an XY uh, scoping uh, setup. And I've got the X coming from my, my rubidium controlled bench uh, at 10 megahertz. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm adjusting the oscillator to try and slow down that Lissajou pattern just as much as I can. Yeah, pretty close. Right about there. Very, very slowly revolving. I'm going to seal that up. And we'll replace the cover on this thing. Let's go ahead and measure the, uh, the output. This counter is running by the rubidium as well, the um, external input. is from the rubidium. All right, I'm getting 10 million point one. So, and there's 10 million even. So we're somewhere between 0 and, uh, excuse me, we're somewhere between 0 0.01 and 0 0.1. We don't know where, but that's good. We're essentially dead on. So, if this uh, oscillator is true to its specs, it'll, uh, it'll hold this to within about a hertz a year. And uh, we are accurate on the dial right now at 10 megahertz. And we can dial in whatever frequency we want based on that. So let's, uh, let's give it a test. Right now I'm outputting a 10 megahertz signal on this Tektronix 2465. Get a good look. It's a nice looking sine wave. And if I was to... Uh, wanted to do so I could go to a hundred megahertz up our intensity a little bit here so we can see that there we go so that's a hundred megahertz back to ten there's one we would have to Which 
too bright. Back to 10. And uh, if I wanted, I can go 10 million and one hertz. We'd never see it on the, uh, the screen up here unless we go XY and then we see that our listen to pattern is bouncing if I move it to zero we see it slows greatly down and if I once again take the output move it to a digital frequency counter and I suffer the several seconds of gate count time that we require we'll uh, we'll be able to get a measurement of this frequency versus the rubidium and right now we're seeing it's 10 million point zero so at nine million nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine point eight so and then we're back to ten somewhere between point oh eight and point zero now if I uh, if I vary the channel the one hertz selector Ten million and one hertz. Ten million and one point zero. If I go up another one, ten million and one nine. So within a tenth of a hertz of being two hertz. Going up to three, we're within a tenth of a hertz of being three. If I want to uh, put out 100 megahertz, kilohertz. Essentially, 100 megahertz. Um, to within two hertz. On B channel we can measure the 200 megahertz. Okay, so 199,999,999. So within a hertz of 200 megahertz anyway. All right, we dialed up to 250 megahertz, the high end. And in order to get there, we had to go to 249 and then all nines. So we are 249,999,997. So we're within 3 hertz of 250 megahertz. Okay, I've at this point I've dialed to 900,000 Hertz. Now that's technically below the specs. So I'm in territory where I can't really expect to get an output, but I have 899,999.98 Hertz. And I do have a nice waveform. So I beat my specs. I'm able to get 900,000. Let's go to 800. Okay, waveform still looking good. 799,999.99 hertz. So beautiful. If I uh, go to 700, what happens? Still have a nice looking output. 
699,999.99 hertz. Right on the money. All right, that's 700. Go to 600. Still holding a waveform. My counter is in the process of coming up with a new count. And we have 599,999.98. So we've gone down to 600,000. 500,000. Well, now look at that. So at 500,000 hertz, we're not getting an output. I go back to 6, and I see that I'm not there. 7, I've got it. If I go back to 6, I get it. So even at 6, you can't guarantee you're going to get it unless you go lock up to 700,000 and then come back. So somewhere between 600 and 700 kilohertz um, is our start point for frequency generation on this unit. So there you have it, a really beautiful frequency addressable unit, uh, very quick to respond, easy to understand, nice clean output. Um, would make a really fine frequency source for RF on your on your bench for anything from let's say 700,000 hertz up to 250 megahertz within a hertz, one hertz step. Pretty darn good. So happy bidding, folks, and um, we'll see you again.